In the last episode, in my attempt to build my own drone and get it to fly, I nearly destroyed it. No, no, no. That's right. In this episode, I'm going to add in some AI to this drone so that it will recognize gesture commands to take off and land just like how the DJI does with its air gestures. To find out how I did it and how I recovered the drone from a near fatal crash, we have to go back two weeks. Back when I began the planning phase of the AI in computer vision development. In this phase, I defined the gestures that it should have, which is to take off, land, and follow. Now, it would be really nice to integrate all 10 gestures that DJI features on its drones, but due to time constraints, I had to stick with the basics. I also heard a rumor that if you like and subscribe to this channel, it will add another gesture command to this drone. So how it works is that on boot up, the smart camera will detect me and once I give the command to take off, which looks like this. Yeah, I know, I look like a cheerleader doing this. But anyways, the drone will spin its rotors and fly into the sky until a certain altitude is reached. Then the drone should on detection follow me along the, its your axis until I give the Naruto command to land. Now keep in mind that we want to avoid unintentional commands. So when the drone is flying, we don't want it to take off again. And when it's landed, we don't want it to take off by mistake. I mean, imagine if I go to pick up the drone and its rotors spin right into my face. So we'll need to code in some additional logic to ensure that this does not happen. Now, if you remember in the last video, we got the drone flying in position hold. So I'm happy with that. There's a few things that we need to do first before we can add in the AI and computer vision module. The first step is sort of a side mission in the A game. I need to 3D print leg extensions for the drone that will give me additional space to place a larger LiPo battery at the bottom of the drone. Without these legs, the drone will end up landing flat on this battery, which could end up like the Galaxy Note 7s. Yeah, we all know how that ended up. Now, I could have used these legs that came out of the box with my drone, but if you watched my last video, we don't want this drone to topple over every time we land it. So I printed out some legs, <laughs> as funny as that sounds, and attached them to the drone as far away from the center of gravity as possible to avoid the drone from toppling over. But after landing the drone, it became apparent to me that these 3D printed legs weren't as strong as I initially expected. So after some searching, I found this really cool spider leg 3D print design. I'll have a link to these files down below as well as the kit and course on how to build your own drone. Besides looking really sick, they were much stronger and could handle the impact upon landing. The drone almost reminds me of Sherlock from the Lord of the Rings. Okay cool, so side quest completed. Let's stop wasting time and get back to the main quest which is programming the drone. Now how do we go about programming this drone to do our bidding? Well on board this drone we have a Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. I actually destroyed my Raspberry Pi 4 in the last video. I have a backup Pi 3B Plus, which talks to the Pixhawk autopilot and uses the drone kit framework for intercommunication between the two devices. Now, I have no knowledge or experience with drone kit. So I spoke to my friend Caleb from the Drone Dojo and it turns out that he actually has a drone programming course in addition to his drone building course, which made things super easy for a simpleton like me to program a drone. I'll have a link down below to these courses if you are interested. But anyhow, with this course, the first thing I needed to do was to implement the code that would get my drone to take off and land on its own. Okay, so this is our first autonomous drone mission. We essentially loaded a pre-programmed mission and we're going to get our drone to fly itself without any inputs from the controls. Let's see if it works. Slide to confirm. And then our drone should take off by itself. Hopefully the battery is not flat. You can see there's no input from the controls. It's flying on its own, completing its mission. It's holding there for a couple of seconds and then it must go and land right over there. Awesome, it worked. Okay, cool. So today is another big day for we're going to do another flight test. And essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to execute a line of code and that drone over there should take off, fly for one meter and then land. Let's hope that's actually the case. 
bit nervous regarding whether it'll work or not. They did recommend that we had to leash the drone. So if you look down here, we've got a little bit of a leash connected to some weights. So in case it flies off into space, which we don't want that to happen, we covered in that respect. The other failsafe is our radio control. So if it does do anything unexpected, we should uh, change our modes and that will automatically bring it into stabilized mode where I can take it back down to earth. Let's see how it goes. Ready to take control at any time. There we go, there we go. Okay. Yep, look at that. It's flying by itself and then it's going to land. Oh, this, that worked better than expected. Let's try that again. I'm not sure why it takes so long for it to start up, but I guess it gives it time for me to get away in some dangerous cases that could occur. All right, there we go. At the ready. That's one meter, and then must land. Sweet. This is the two meter test. All right, so this is probably yet another test that we are running. You can see the drone over there. So this is an autonomous flight where the drone will lift up to a safe altitude, and then it will go to the north, south, east, west. <laughs> ah, attack. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> okay, so let's see how it goes. I think it worked. It did move to the side, but it was very subtle. Let's try increasing it a bit. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> that did not work. Here we go. To the left, to the right, and left. Drone flight test. It's flying by itself and landing as well. Flawless victory. Now that we're able to autonomously take off and land, we can start with the integration of the AI and computer vision. But first, we have to go on another side quest. Now in this course, Caleb mentioned that it is highly advisable to first simulate your drone code before implementing real world tests. And so that's what I did. In Caleb's precision landing and drone delivery course, I learned how to use OpenCV to detect RG code markers within the gazebo simulation environment. In the real world, however, I wanted to detect myself. So I just used different AR markers as placeholders for now. <laughs> Look at that, my virtual drone crashed. I think it's virtual batteries died out somehow. <laughs> so now onto the integration of the AI onto the drone. I'll be using the OpenCV AI kit by Luxonus for implementing real-time person detection at 30 frames per second. The reason for using this unit is that all of the AI is done on board this module so that it frees the Raspberry Pi to do other tasks like giving commands to the flight controller based on the detections. So first up, let's test to see if the entire system will work while in flight. Okay, guys, so I've managed to integrate the code of the OpenCV AI kit, the AI API, onto the Raspberry Pi, and I've mixed it up with the takeoff and landing script. This is what we have at the moment. We have our OpenCV AI kit, which will do some AI processing. In this case, it will just detect my hands or different sign language signals and then relate back to the Pi. And this is where it will decide whether to take off and land. But right now, I'm just testing to see if the code works at all. There's no integration between drone control and the AI part of it. So I'm just going to see if on takeoff, are we able to use the OpenCV AI kit? And if so, is the image from the OpenCV AI kit clear enough or is it prone to vibrations from the drone? 
Let's see how it goes. Okay, so the first test failed. I think the Raspberry Pi was shutting down when I had to activate the OpenCVA kit. It's very strange. I'm not sure how I'm going to solve this. Um, one way I could do it is by starting the OpenCVA kit first and then starting the takeoff sequence. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I think I've sorted out the power supply issue. I was actually very stupid because I was trying to power it off the power pins, uh, which is not ideal. Now I'm supplying power directly from the battery to a 5 volt power supply. So it steps down the voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts and then it feeds it into the micro USB connector. So that is the much more ideal way of powering <laughs> your Raspberry Pi. And this way the power won't cut when we spin up our propellers and run our OpenCV AI kit. Let's see how it runs. Okay, getting up the target altitude. Let's see if we're able to get a stream from our OpenCV AI kit. There we go. That is from the drone. It is updating and we're able to see what's happening. I'm just going to keep it there and see if we can detect it. Success! Okay, so the problem that we're having now is that our camera is moving all over the place, as you've seen. Now, to do any sort of computer vision stuff, it makes it a bit tricky. Okay, if you're giving it commands like land or go up, go down, that would be fine. But now the problem comes in is if you're tracking it. Now, if I'm moving my hand to the side and the camera is moving all over, uh, it's going to be hard to keep our image center, for example, and to lock onto the hand. Now, the way we can solve this is by using a gimbal stabilizer uh, that will help stabilize our motion. So depending on where we are, it will stabilize that motion. So you can either have a single axis or triple axis gimbal stabilizer. I'm not sure which one would be ideal. I would need to test that for this application. Also, you can see that we're running out of quite a lot of real estate at the moment. So we have our battery taking up a lot of space. I could move it to the center. That would help a little bit. That would actually make more sense. But if I have my beefier battery, um, my 6000 milliamp battery, that, would, that one I could only mount at the bottom. So I'll have to be really picky of where I place my gimbal. So uh, a shortcut that I can take is for now uh, to dampen any vibrations because this one you can see is very loose. So maybe it will move around all over the place. I could 3D print a part um, that could be mounted on here because this is where vibrations are actually dampened. So that could make things a little bit easier. Let's try the, the cheap alternative, which I mentioned now. And then, and if things still don't work out, we could maybe try buying a gimbal stabilizer. Let's see how that works. Okay, I think some double-sided tape might work. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Just take it and mount it right over there. Now at this point, we have our hardware issues sorted out. We just need to build our model to detect various gestures. So that is take off, land and follow. I probably spent like half the day running around my garden with my dog chasing me to accumulate enough data to build up my dataset, which I then annotated and trained using the RoboFlow platform. If you don't already know what RoboFlow is, it is this all-in-one computer vision platform that allows you to easily annotate your dataset, train your model and deploy for your own custom computer vision applications. So I spoke to Joseph from RoboFlow and they released this nifty feature which allows you to train the OpenCV AI kit with just a single click. Insane, right? You can get this dataset and free training credits to the first 50 people when you sign up at public.roboflow.com forward slash AS. So the younger me wanted to use hand gestures as well as body gestures to control the drone. <sighs> if only he knew. Few moments later. Great. Now that our model is trained, let's test it out. Let's start the sequence. Right now it's detecting me in follow mode. I want it to take off. So let's give the takeoff command. And there we go. Alright. And right now we want it to land. So I have to 
go in range over here. Give the command. And there we go. Look at that. Look at that. It was. So there we have it. If you thought this was cool, let me know in the comments down below and if you have any suggestions on how to improve it. So to wrap up, we are now able to get a drone to autonomously take off and land given specific gesture commands. But there's just one thing missing. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the follow command. As you'll see in the next episode, I'll show you how I got my drone to follow me along its yo axis. This was pretty cool and risky at the same time because my drone crashed a couple of times on its own. To find out what exactly happened, gently tap on that subscribe button with that bell icon to get notified when the next video comes out. And lastly, if you would like the source code, parts list, video tutorials, blueprints and the behind the scenes of how I made the gesture control drone as well as using the OpenCV and Raspberry Pi, consider checking out my 6-in-1 mega course in computer vision and AI. All of the links will be down below. And a huge shout out to channel members and sponsors Roboflow which you can use for annotation and training of your own AI models. Thank you as well to our elite augmented engineers Andre, Shane Prokop and Claudio Barsan. You guys are great supporters of this channel. Ah, nothing I like more than letting my drone loose fast and furious out at the RC field. Okay, I think some double sided tape might work. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Just take it and mount it right over there. Just like how the DJI, just like how DJI, DJI, DJI. Ah!